Is the Akasis 4K60 even worth it? Akasis, I think that's how you say their name, sent me this for free. They're not paying me. They just want me to check it out and see if it's any good compared to any other capture cards. This is a PCIe capture card, so it goes right into your computer as opposed to being a USB. So let's take a look and see if this is even worth it. So when I was unboxing this thing, the first thing I would notice obviously is there's the capture card that goes into PCIe slots. You also get an HDMI cable. That's really nice that they include that. I have so many HDMI cables, I don't know what to do with myself, but it's a nice touch. In addition to what comes inside the box, there's brackets as well extra brackets for uh, let's say your motherboard sits further away from the back of your PC or closer or sometimes they might just fit differently based on different models you've got extra pieces there in case it doesn't fit and more on that later because I did have an issue with that I've reviewed a bunch of capture cards on this channel in the past and if I had to choose a winner it would be the Elgato Camlink 4k it's a 4k capture card at 30 fps if you want to get 60 fps you got to go down to 1080p which honestly isn't that big of a deal because you're not really streaming in 4k anyway it just gives you more flexibility in OBS or whatever stream software you use. Now we're going to take a look and see the comparisons between these two capture cards. We'll take a look and see if any latency is in them, which there definitely is in both. And I'm going to show you the difference and if it's really noticeable. Uh, we're also going to take a look and see, do these inputs and outputs really work as well as they claim? They claim zero latency. Let's take a look and see if that's even true. So far for all of my streaming, I've used the Elgato Camlink 4K, but let's see if this will even replace it. Now remember, you need to have a motherboard that supports this capture card. My previous PC, which is an older computer, you can see there's a new one right behind me. It's sent by Digital Storm, a new video coming out pretty soon about that. It's got an RTX 3090, and I'm also gonna tell you how I was able to get that. But with this capture card, you have to have specific PCIe slots in your motherboard. This capture card is not compatible with a PCIe X1 or a PCI slot, but it is compatible with a PCIe X4 and a PCIe X8 and a PCIe X16. In my computer behind me, I have a PCIe 4, 8, and 16 slots in that motherboard. So when I got this capture card, I was pretty confident that this was gonna be compatible. When I was first trying to install this capture card, it was a little finicky and rather annoying. So the brackets that were attached to this capture card were either too big or too small. So when I replaced the big one with the small one, I realized that it still wasn't gonna fit. And the HDMI connections were kind of inside the PC. They weren't sticking out of the PC like any of the other HDMI inputs or outputs on the back of the computer. So I tried putting the bigger bracket back onto the capture 4K60 and it still wasn't fitting. And at this point, I was getting a little frustrated trying to figure it out. Honestly, I didn't think it was gonna fit. So I did what any MacGyver would do. I just put it in the computer and didn't worry about putting in the bracket. <laughs> At this point, I didn't have very high hopes for this capture card. So when I went to their website and downloaded the drivers, which I will leave a link down in the description if you wanna download those drivers for this capture card, I downloaded the drivers, installed them, or I tried to, but it wouldn't notice the capture card that was in my PCI 4 slot. So then I tried to put it into the PCIe 16 slot and it still didn't work. So I put it back into the 4 slot, shut down my computer, restarted it, it booted back up, I tried to reinstall that driver and it noticed that it picked up the capture card which I was rather excited about it. It actually works. And then I simply clicked that source that was available now because of that driver. So then it was just a matter of opening OBS right clicking and adding a new capture device and selecting my new PCIe capture card. So now that I've actually got this capture card working, let's take a look and see if it's better than the Camlink 4K and what other features does this capture card include. So it's a couple days later and finally some extra gear arrived so I can finish this actual review. So what we have is we've got an HDMI splitter which is coming from the camera itself. It's splitting it into two HDMI cables. You can actually see them right over here. These two thick cables, they're 50 15 feet long, so long for an HDMI cable, but it's because I want to be able to run it to the stream PC behind me. More on that in a second. So two uh, HDMI cables are being split. One is going into the PCIe capture card and one is going into the Camlink 4K. I'm recording them separately in o two OBS programs. So the Camlink is going into one OBS recording. The other one is going into another OBS recording. So we've got two files to compare. Right now you're seeing the video recorded right from my camera and it's also going into the Rodecaster Pro for uh, some good audio sounds. It's gonna sound the exact same in OBS because I've got audio treatment in my Rodecaster Pro. I haven't done any audio treatment in OBS. But let's take a look and see the differences here if we have these two side by side you can see that there's really 
pretty much, I can't tell that there's any delay between the two. They both look exactly the same. Uh, I don't see any uh, frame drops as far as I can tell. Uh, it looks all normal. Currently the Cam Link is doing 4K 30. The PCIe capture card is doing 4K 60. So these are currently maxed out at what their max resolutions are and their frame rates. I don't notice any difference com to com be completely honest. I'm actually going to drag them side by side just to make sure that I'm just, I'm not making a mistake here. Yeah, they look exactly the same. There's almost no difference, if no difference at all. If I were to say there were any difference, the Camlink 4K is just a very, very small fraction, like 10 milliseconds, 20 milliseconds. I'm gonna say that because I feel like there's a very, very, very slight delay between the two. I can't tell, uh, but to be completely honest, 10 to 20 millisecond delay between the two is not a difference. Now you might see a slight delay between what the audio sounds like and the microphone from the OBS recording because it's still gotta travel through a splitter, it's gotta travel through a 15 foot HDMI cable into a capture card and then into OBS. The video might be slightly behind from the from the audio but it's going to be about 100 milliseconds and i'm going to show you what it looks like directly from the camera to the capture card into obs without a splitter without a 15 foot cable i'm going to do that right now so right now i've removed the splitter and these two 15 foot hdmi cables right now what you're seeing is hdmi from my camera to the camlink 4k and into OBS. There's currently about a 100 millisecond delay, which is almost unnoticeable to the human eye. You might be able to notice it a tiny bit if I've mentioned it to you, because now you're looking for it, but also it's just very hard to catch. Okay, so now I'm using the HDMI cable directly from my camera into the PCIe capture card, currently at 60 frames per second 4K. And honestly, I don't notice any difference. I'm monitoring it right now. I see maybe a 100 millisecond delay, just like the Elgato Camlink 4K, uh, which is actually, I'm honestly a little surprised, especially with an off brand like this. I'm, I'm just looking here, there's, the motion looks great. I'm not dropping any frames here, but you might be wondering why should I spend $200 on a PCIe capture card if I can buy a $120 Camlink 4K? A little bit more about that in just a second, but first. So remember, you can use this Akasis 4K60 with a dual PC streaming setup. So I've obviously got my main gaming PC here, but in this case, I'm gonna call this my streaming PC just for this scenario, right? So my streaming PC is all set up. I've got OBS on it. I've got my camera going to it too, right? But my gaming PC is right behind me here, okay? So let's switch over to that real quick. All right, so now we're at the gaming PC. The streaming PC is behind me. Everything's going into that computer and then it's going out to Twitch or YouTube, whatever platform you use to stream. Now I've got my game here on the, the computer screen on the gaming PC and let's just go into uh, a practice here. All right, so now I'm on the gaming PC here and if I'm, you know, just, playing my game, I'm looking at the, the other screen where the stream PC is and I see, just like usual, a, about a 100 millisecond delay. I don't see anything crazy. As soon as I move my mouse, it looks like, you can see it on this screen here, as soon as I move this mouse, you can see on screen there, it's almost exactly the same time. So delay is not bad at all. In fact, it's almost not even noticeable. So you can definitely use this for a dual PC streaming setup. So now I've used my computer here. I've got an HDMI connected to this and I've got a display port connected to this. My display is going to my uh, screen here. The HDMI is going through the 15 foot cable you can see in the corner there and it's going into the capture card, the PCI 4K60. Now, what happens if I'm using a console, let's say, and I wanna be able to see my screen, but let's assume there's only one HDMI cable coming out of my console, but I wanna send it to stream into my PCIe capture card, but how am I gonna see it? I don't wanna watch OBS and play my screen on OBS. Well, this capture card also has a pass-through. Now, I'm not sure what it's gonna look like, so let's test that out right now. Right now, I see the streaming PC, or you could use a console. It's going into the in port, on the PCIe capture card. Now there's an output on the capture card as well, which is going into my monitor here so I can actually see my game. Assuming I have a console controller here, I don't own one, but assuming I do, I can see it right here. Let's see what the uh, input delay is. Oh, that's really good. 
I could be gaming on my console. I can watch it in 60 FPS at 4K. Right now my screen here is 2K. So I'm sending a 2K signal into a 4K capture card. So I'm not maxing it out. If I had a 4K display, that would be fine. At least with a streaming PC. If I had a console, and assuming I could send 4K into my capture card from the console, it can support that. Keep in mind, you won't be able to game at higher than 60 FPS because this capture card is 4K 60. Okay, so I can do 2K at 144 Hertz. So that's actually pretty nice. I can record or stream at 2K at 144 Hertz. Assuming that I can get a 144 Hertz monitor into the capture card from my console or my stream PC, I can still game at 144 Hertz monitor through the out port or the HDMI out on the capture card in the stream PC I can send that to my monitor so I can actually watch the game. I can do that at 2K 144Hz. I cannot do that at 4K at 144. I can only do 4K 60. To be honest, if I'm gaming on a console, that's all I really need is, you know, if I'm doing 4K 60, great, but most of the time, I might even do 1080p 60 or 1080p 100, maybe 140. 144Hz is great. I'm not gonna complain about it. But if I'm gaming here, it's real time through the pass through. Pass through is great. I don't see any delay, which was advertised like that. So why would I spend $200 for the PCIe capture card as opposed to the $120 Camlink 4K? Well, it has a pass through, so you can use it for a console. With a Camlink 4K, you don't have that option unless you're using an HDMI splitter like the one I have, which is like a $20 HDMI splitter. You can split your HDMI into a Camlink 4K and then the other one into your PCIe capture card. That's possible. It's a bit more of a setup. There's nothing wrong with it and it worked just fine as you saw earlier. So because I've got a wireless mouse and keyboard, <laughs> why didn't I just do this in the first place? I could just game right here. Look at this. There's absolutely no delay. I play Valorant pretty often. You should come check me out, twitch.tv slash Frost. And there's no delay whatsoever through this pass through. So if I'm gaming through my console, or maybe it's through my stream PC and I want to have the out. I only have one HDMI cable on my graphics card. Let's assume that scenario. Send that HDMI into my stream PC, use the pass through with the HDMI out into my main monitor, and I've got a whole setup here. This looks great. I see no delay in any OBS recording or anything. I'm so glad I'm recording OBS. I will be so mad if I forgot to press record. Now let's assume that you're duplicating your monitors so that you can, you know, send it to your capture card. Now, if you're dropping frame rate or you're losing your Hertz, let's go to the desktop here. Let's right click and go to display settings. Now, what you can do is go to the advanced display settings and here in right now I am set to 60 Hertz, all right? So if I go to uh, this over here, display adaptive properties, let's go to the monitor and I can update my Hertz to 144 Hertz. Let's apply that. Uh, looks like the screen is freaking out. Oh wait, it's back at least in here. I don't see it there. I don't see it through my pass through either. So I'm completely blind if I'm using a console setting my uh, Hertz at 144 Hertz. And now the screen is freaking out here. What is going on? Okay, so I can't play at 144 hertz. And that's pretty clear. It kicked me out of it. Uh, let's see if I can at least go higher. So let's change the monitor to, let's do 100 hertz. Let's apply that. Oh, that's why, because I, I could skip the changes if I wanted to, and that's why it kicked me out. Let's keep the changes. Let's click OK. My monitor is refresh rate as at 100 hertz. Am I getting that on the pass through to my monitor here? I can't tell. Honestly, I can't tell the difference. It's because 60 and 100 hertz is only a difference by 40 hertz, which might be, you know, important in a competitive sense, but I don't see a huge difference at all. Let's, let's do 144 hertz. Let's apply that. I've got to save the changes, but I cannot see it on my main screen here, but I can see it on my recording in OBS. It's just not sending a 44, 144 hertz signal through the pass through. Let's save those changes. I can't see it on my second screen here. So I'm gonna to have to change it back. Now I'm just using OBS to see this. All right, let's do 120 Hertz. Let's apply that. Is it gonna show up on my main screen? It is not. It won't send a 120 Hertz signal through the pass through. All right, back to 100 Hertz. 
Okay, so it looks like it can only do a max of 100 hertz through the pass through on the capture card onto my main screen. So if I'm using a console and I wanna be able to game at high refresh rates, or if I'm using a, a dual PC stream setup, my gaming PC is behind me, assuming I'm sending the signal into the capture card, which is plugged into the streaming PC, I can only send a maximum of 100 hertz through the pass through so I can see it on my monitor. I can still send a 144 hertz signal into the in port on the PCIe capture card and it'll show up in OBS. I don't see any issues with that. If I wanted to use the pass through, which is an out on that capture card, then I can only do a max of 100 hertz. I hope that made sense. It's a little confusing, but pretty straightforward if you understand the principle of what's going on here. I love this capture card. If I get a console, I can game without switching anything. I just switch my scene with my stream deck to a different scene set up with my capture card that is connected into my PCIe and I can have the pass through into my monitor, switch the input on my monitor without switching stuff and it's good to go. Oh, this is amazing. For 200 bucks, that's great. So there you have it. It's a pretty decent capture card. I definitely would consider using it, especially if I had two camera angles and I wanted to use that. Uh, and I can also use it for dual PC streaming. As far as is it worth it for the video quality and latency, that's up to you to decide if you like it or not. Personally, I don't think it's all that bad. I can always add an audio delay to my audio that's going into OBS. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn how to fix dual PC audio problems, I will be uploading that video next week. So stick around for that if you're interested. Leave a like for my cat because she's extremely cute and uh, I'll see you next time. But until then, make something great. Kitty, come. Okay, so come. She's been sleeping. She's half asleep, but isn't she cute? Hi, say hi. Say hi. You are adorable.